I have always been up for anything. And I don't mean that in a way people who can't decide what movie to watch or people who are looking for outlandish sexual encounters mean it. I mean it like intellectually. I will listen to anyone's viewpoint and assess them on the arguments that they give. I, I think that's only fair. Am I going to disagree with them? Probably. That's just within my nature. What's life without an argument? Like, the other day, I asked somebody what music they like, and they said, Pop mainly, you know? Chart stuff. <laughs> well, you can only imagine how I scoffed. By pop. Do you mean that, that mass-produced, auto-tuned sex worship didn't really grow into a conversation? That humdinger seemed to end it right there and then. And, uh, and, and that's what I mean, you see. It, it, nobody is willing to engage in a debate en anymore. You say one thing, just one meagre thing, and to challenge their tiny brain opinions, and suddenly it's like, Alistair, you can't call your grandma a fucking liberal at the dinner table. And that's why I've, I've always liked the internet. People are... People willing to engage in a debate, long ones, hours and hours of, of stimulating ideas, pushing back and forth over the formation of some some argument or other. It's it's not like university where it's only good, clean fun if everyone's feelings are validated. It's a really it's a really complicated discussion uh, deep in the comment section where if you just open your ears, maybe you learn something. Great way to make friends too. I've met loads of dudes on the board who, who I'd go as far to say is my best friends. Some people think that's a bit sad. And my friends are online and I'd prefer to spend my time engaging in free thought and instead of instead of something uh, I don't know, normal like like getting into lycra and aimlessly cycling from here to Penzance for Kids with cleft palates or your balls blister. Maybe not the best example. But you know exactly the type I'm on about. Why is my hobby, free thought and online discourse, any less real than, than some idiot who watched the Olympics uh, and was so inspired by people peddling that he decided to take it up as his new personality of the month? Just jogged a quick 50k. It's windy out there. Yeah, I've heard of this great new cycle route. It's just up the M60, straight into oncoming traffic. Th this fascination with the idea that we can't enjoy the zenith of technology that mankind has slaved to create over the course of the millennia. Go outside, get away from the computer a while, it's melting your brain! No. Have you not entertained the idea that I could be cultivating and formulating ideas better than you know? It's not melting my brain, it's, it's moulding it, it's forming it to become something better. Anyway, as I was saying, anything is up for discussion, but that means I'm usually looking to the fringes of society to have the best conversations. The people who are resolute in their beliefs. It is a testament to somebody that they are willing to click send on their original thoughts and, and thereby solidify their views into everlasting code, carving their thoughts into rock. They die a small death in placing the contents of their mind somewhere irreversible. Even if I disagree with them, uh, at least I can respect that they would die for something. I think it was two years ago when I first came across the content that, that spoke to me. There's always been something of a nerd inside me. A, a tiny man with a brain who needs who needs Star Wars and, and Catan and D&D &D to survive. The world is never keen to talk about these noble pursuits. Certainly, nobody around me was, anyway. So, I had to, I had to go online if I wanted to engage my inner nerd. 
And that's exactly what I did. There's a community for pretty much anything your inner nerd desires. Like anime? You got it. Go to Crunchyroll for it. Love video games? I got you, bro. Check out Slash V. You can spend your entire lifetime watching somebody uh, speedrun Wii Sports Resort if you want. Nice shot! YouTube does an amazing job at, at getting you more of the stuff, getting you more of that stuff as well. As I grew up, though, Wii Sports Resort didn't quite cut it anymore. I wanted something... Something that engaged me uh, beyond that got me got me firing on all cylinders. I just can't sit still for very long like other people. I need my information quick, digestible, and preferably in the format of a 20 minute long video format. Luckily, that's the world we live in. I wonder how people lived before this. What filled their time? How much time did they spend drooling, reading a newspaper, getting tetanus and drinking water that had feces in it. Anyway, I was probably just like you. I am just like you. Except, I get it. And you don't. I could tell you the channels that will open your eyes, but the likelihood is... Well, it'll probably autoplay after the video. So, shout out to whoever's next in the queue. You know who you are. So, this is one for the history books, and I thought I'd share it because I shit you not, it is 100% pure gold. Most of you who go to university or have been will know that it's not really an environment that welcomes right-wing opinions. Raise your voice too much and you'll basically lose your degree. These places are simply propaganda machines for the left, and all I want from my time there is to learn. and not learn how to create some new world order through identity politics. That's why I don't really view myself as a student. I'm more a voyeur, soaking up knowledge and ruffling feathers of authority where I can. Anyhow, there I am, walking into my seminar for machine learning, minding my own business, happily listening to the Rogan podcast. The Thinking Man's Relaxation Podcast. And I happen to notice this girl across from me. For the life of me, I can't understand why she's looking at me, but she is really quite intently staring at me. Eye contact was becoming harder and harder to maintain, as I noticed... A MASSIVE WART! That was burgeoning out of her left temple. It was a tractor beam. And I'm trying not to look at it. I'm trying not to look at it. And, but, I just, but I just can't stop myself. It's like that bit in Indiana Jones. Uh, where they all open the lost ark and their faces melt off. I would usually just write the girl off as defective. But there was something about it that was quite charming. I actually have a similar wart on my ball sack, so maybe we are kindred spirits in that way. Now, obviously I'm not going to declare myself a virgin there and then, but I'm no Chad either. It's not the most natural thing in the world, is it, to be intently locked eyes with somebody, so I thought I ought to make or initiate some conversation. I searched and searched my brain for, for something to say, something that wouldn't make me seem like some some dribbling pre-hominid. So, I scanned around to see if I can glean 
any witty insight from my immediate surroundings. Of course, to no avail. And at this point, my brain was going like a million miles an hour. When at last, the 1000 IQ idea inserts itself into my frontal lobes. As the preeminent psychologist Jordan Peterson points out, there's a theory that compliments are the most effective social tool in initiating human interaction. My eyes naturally start to slowly drift. Down the girl's neck before fixating on her chest area. Imagine my disgust, my horror, my shock when there, covering what I could only imagine to be like B cup breasts, was a rainbow coloured Jeremy Corbyn t shirt. The immediate temptation is to back away and never talk to a female ever again, just in case next time they haven't identified themselves as like a complete moron. My friends, I resist the urge and instead begin to think of the fun I could have trying to corral debate out of her during the seminar. Now, you all may be thinking... Why in the world would you do that, Alistair? Surely there can't be anything to be discussed in a machine learning seminar that would land you remotely close to the geopolitical area of conversation. It is there where you have made your first mistake, my young paddle ones. My seminar leader, is a, he's a decent guy, but he's the type of guy that could be knocked over by a door closing too quickly. I'm going to put it in polite terms. The guy's been dodging a coffin for longer than I've been alive. There's no chance this guy could handle any solids. Never mind if I derail his entire seminar with some perfectly planted seeds of discontent. So, whilst we're walking in, I hit her with the, Wow, you like Jeremy Corbyn too? I mean, I've been waiting for somebody like him to come along. I mean, who doesn't like the IRA? I came to university to seek knowledge. Obviously, that's not the reason everybody attends, but but for me it was. I thought I'd find my people here. When I arrived, I was somewhat dumbfounded, I won't lie. Most of my time spent on campus, I felt, I felt like I'd passed into some alternative world where... Young people roam free at the behest of the rest of society to say or do whatever they want on the taxpayer's coin, which is usually spending all of their student loan on pure seven grams worth of ketamine just to cross the borders of perception and reach some astral plane. I've never paid tax and... I'm all for free speech, but it just seemed that nobody was inclined into doing actual work. Seminars are a particularly hilarious highlight of my week. Ten of us sat around not making a peep whilst some hungover PhD student tries to squeeze an answer out of us like he's sucking on a on a on a fruit. It's much less, I don't know, studious than I thought it would be. Most of my peers, and calling them peers is a bit of a stretch, people who happen to be in the same university as me and smell like either alcohol or BO would be more accurate. Most of them are carbon copies of the people I went to school with. Brain dead. Following the narrative Autobot straight out of the neoliberal factory. It's like Tony Blair spawned them from his demon arsehole himself. Except he actually made them Marxists and they are worse than him in every single way.
But apart from their political views, none of them actually sound interested in learning. I'm pretty convinced that books are just background decoration for metropolitan liberal elites who like doing television interviews and want to make themselves look arty farty intellectual. Yeah. I haven't needed a book in years. It's, it's just not how the world works anymore. We are no longer confined to the printing press. We have an infinite space for writing where anybody can access and post. Obviously, a nutter is going to come along every now and then and post some unsubst unsubstantiated rubbish, but that's for the intellectual free market to deal with. Separate the wheat from the chaff. Obviously, I'm not doing the wheat and chaff separation, but, but somebody is, and I trust them. The list of people I don't trust, however, gets longer the older I get, particularly since coming to university. The fusty academics have a concrete agenda. They are radicalising everybody's impressionable little Harrys and Eleanors to become social justice warriors. Naturally, I challenge every belief that I hear at university. I think of it as, as doing my bit to prevent the rise of communism. I learned to challenge authority at a young age, obviously at the annoyance of my parents and teachers. There was not a decision they made that I didn't question, and I think that that's an important quality to have. Why does VAT exist? Why do I have to hand in my homework? Why do I have to go to the sanatorium for the almost deceased to see grandma? She smells of piss. So I trust nothing and question everything. In this world, it is essential to have your wits about you so as not to become a mindless drone. I am one of the truth seekers here. Challenging the narrative. That's what makes me different to all these fucking mouth breeders I'm surrounded by. <sighs> they swallow it up. I even talked about it in the last paper I handed in. It was a critical takedown of cancel culture. A critical exposure of the late identitarian concept of cancel culture. It didn't even get marked. That's how afraid of our ideas they are. I am eternally grateful for this platform to connect with other people because Lord knows I can't find anyone like us in the real world. I've already got disciplinary action for, for creating a hostile environment for women in the seminars. Needless to say, I'd never attended the meeting. Why should I have to answer to what the normies think? We have created an alternative space. I can show you videos that will send you chills. The control that these people have over language, what we can and cannot say these days. It's a tired analogy, but I can only compare it to 1984. Free speech is on the run and dying fast. There's no quick and easy fix either. Political correctness is ingrained in our society. What must we do? Challenge them everywhere. Expose them for the thought police that they are. I do my fair share of guerrilla tactics. Infiltrate a Facebook group with middle-aged, round-bellied mums and begin to boast Breitbart articles. Turn the crowd against anybody who disagrees. It's really easy to become part of a community. People like me can be turned so quickly when they know their culture is under attack. Convince the crowd that social justice warriors are coming for something they love. Star Wars, video games or whatever. They turn and say, Star Wars isn't racist. How dare you insult our community and, and change things when it's ours. And then it begins. They begin to question. They begin to question the narrative that has been laid out before them. We won't stand idly by whilst these people deny simple facts about biology and society. The truth is, 
We aren't going to let the globalist cabal take over. So, why is advocating for the right of indigenous people such a fucking taboo? I only know the wonders of democracy because of the British Empire, right? But everyone here, all the white people, are so afraid to fight for themselves because because they're so... They're so strangled by identity politics. I'm lucky. I'm an honorary Westerner. My great grandparents made the smart move to ditch the third world and I'm all better for it. There are hundreds upon thousands of skeptics who aren't afraid to challenge the norm to challenge the agendas out there. And that's why it burns me to my core. When I hear The Walking Dead talking about literally anything. Queuing for my chai soy latte and my ears beginning to snap, crackle and pop when I hear this whomper of a conversation brewing. Two Beckys. Both of them were attempting to dress like a chav when obviously they had the most noticeable Buckinghamshire accent I've ever heard and clearly had enough money to be buying cocaine. You just have to wonder, don't you, what happens to people like that? Sniffing drugs to escape a perfectly acceptable life. Why are you cosplaying like a working class mongrel? I don't understand what's cool about that. You're made of better stuff. It boils my blood to see class traitors like that. It's the reason the West is dying. If people who are from respectable backgrounds can't manage to keep themselves from degenerate behaviour. What have we got as a civilization? And these, these are my contemporaries, the the people that I'm expected to work with, to to marry, to to produce offspring with. So anyway, there we were. Girls behind me chatting about how much of this and that they've taken on the weekend and who they want to shag. In all honesty, right there and then, I lost all fucking hope with women. Like, what is there to be done when every single potential mate out there is just so mid with hedonistic pleasure-seeking that they wouldn't even look at me twice? No doubt their sexual partners are equally as brain-dead. See... I actually don't understand how there are so many of these people. Like, I look at the amount of views that people I follow have and I think there must be more people like me willing to willing to save the cradle of civilization, willing to live a life worth living. Well, are they? Hello, hi, salutations and greetings to everybody. I can't lie, it's been strange to see the influx of comments and views that have come my way over the last week uh, after the Why My Uni Sucks video. Shout out to Slash Poll and R Slash The Donald for your post about me. It is an honour to be your chosen token. You guys have truly made my week sending all your support. I knew this, that this community looked after its own, but I never expected this. I've set up a Patreon, uh, if you want to fund my pastime so it beca can become my main way to pastime. With that, I thought you guys might appreciate it if I started making some more fun and interesting content rather than this just being my vlog channel. So today, maybe I could tell you all how I ended up in this particular corner of the World Wide Webosphere, particularly as the fourth anniversary of the happy election of the Orange Man comes along. And at the time, there was this huge deal called Gamergate. Obviously, for those of you who know, I won't bother explaining. If you don't know, as the old adage goes, fucking Google it.
Gamergate happened and it was a shitstorm. Something about it didn't sit well with me. That feminists were invading a space that had always been ours and telling us how to run it. Video game culture is sexist. Wow, wow, wow. This is a toxic space for women. Wow, wow, wow. Let me make a video game about how fucking depressed I am uh, because of capitalism and the patriarchy. Newsflash. Capitalism is the reason you can make a video game in the first place and the patriarchy doesn't exist. You got your vote. What else is there to cry about? It really just brewed something inside. What I didn't realise was that there'd be an entire fucking legion of people who were feeling exactly the same way. A lot of us didn't know exactly how to articulate that we were angry, but, but, but luckily a few of us did. I remember the exact post that brought me here. I recognised the angry SJW in the title card. The post was something of an essay, so in customary fashion I skipped to the TLDR. For the uninitiated, too long, didn't read. It simply scanned, we are under attack. Instantly I was teleported to somewhere that that made sense. People saying things that the others were afraid to, uh, denying multiculturalism, uh, denouncing the gay agenda, the denial of biology. It was electrifying to see intellectuals doing what they should be, telling it how it is. Discovering political YouTube was like Columbus landing and discovering the new world. <laughs> It really opened my eyes to to the world and shit, you know? Minus all the native killing, but who's really crying about that? And a few years on, many long hours spent talking and watching videos on the topic, and it never rung so true. That the rational, logical way of thinking is dying. It is being killed by... Cultural Marxist reading, reading fucking shit from the Frankfurt School. Again, Google it, people. No longer is freedom of speech the marker of our great civilization. Now you're told, oh, you actually can't say that. It's whateverist. Fuck you. Fuck your attempt to tell me as a free thinking human being what I can and can't say. How about you present some fucking facts and statistics before you speak? Facts don't care about your feelings, you fucking cuck slut. I mean, that's not a thing, but maybe it should be hashtag cuck slut for, for women and, and fucking simps. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed hearing about how I got here. Once you've heard what I've heard, you'll realise how fake it all is. What a facade everything you've been told is. To trust is to set yourself up for disappointment in this world. They will tell you that the media is under attack and will attempt to drown you with meaningless writings and articles and justifications for their globalist bullshit. The media has been lying to you. There are people out there who've been trying to point it out for years and you can't see it. Instead, you're too glued to your TVs to really see what's happening online. Opinions beamed right into your skull from goggle box straight into your retina and frontal lobe. Everyone holds these opinions that aren't ever truly their own, and I don't understand why nobody else can see it. It's all fake. Stormzy, Lady Gaga, and 
and Billie Eilish who come and tell you that the planet's dying or whatever's on the agenda to be pushed today, you know? The world tells you that you have to love Billie Eilish because she dyes her hair shit shades of neon green and and whisper sings over these fucking shitty fruity loops beats. Then Billy fucking eyelash says Well uh I think that such and such people's rights are really important. And everybody cheers Please give up your personal details by signing this petition to enforce a police state. Uh -huh. And when I tell people, they think I'm crazy. Instantly, I see their eyes glaze over and they spew spewage, like pre-programmed responses out of their mouth. They will not listen. Why is nobody listening? Every single person has become a mindless vassal who looks up to made up pop stars instead of, oh, I don't know, somebody important like, oh, I don't know, fucking Nikola Tesla or, or Oliver Cromwell. I mean, Come on, kids. Oliver Cromwell is a lot cooler than Stormzy. He single-handedly ended the monarchy and established our first attempt at a republic. That's destiny. That's will. That is striving. That's being a trailblazer. Why don't people want to talk about that instead of, instead of fucking social justice complaining all goddamn fucking day about what has supposedly held them back? Why is it so hard to accept that you might be the problem? rather than all these concepts and pathetic excuses. The universe is out there, and it's infinite, and these globalist, justice-seeking weirdos with their fucking, with their fucking green hair, and wanting us to eat GMO vegetables, and becoming, becoming lobotomized sloths just so they can fucking control us, not in my fucking name. I'm, I'm not a uni student anymore, and not in the sense that I've graduated, more in a way that I've been kicked out of the institution in a shitstorm over fucking nothing. My parents aren't talking to me. My mum's been acting so menopausal. I could hear her crying when dad was talking to me. She's got a really loud cry. She, she, she sort of snorts. And do you know what I was thinking? I was thinking, what have you got to fucking cry about? Why can't you be happy that you raise someone who is challenging the broken system, who is not afraid to fight for what he believes? Stupid fucking Sadaji woman. Apparently somebody saw my channel and it goes against student guidelines. Doesn't help that I've already got an academic caution for the whole IRA argument. It's like fucking snowflakes. Fuck your guidelines and fuck your whole institution. I'm going to be dedicating all my time to this channel now because you may be able to silence me as a student, but you cannot silence me as a citizen. I can say whatever the fuck I want, you fucking thought police. I have always been on another path. My own path. It's our path. All of ours, which which sounds like something a hippie would say, but, but we have to reclaim. We, we have to reclaim being creative, being, being articulate and being brave. I dare everyone watching this video to post something triggering, to share something that, that isn't considered politically correct. We need to stand our ground. Over and out, nerds.
I thought that this community was a brotherhood. I don't understand. I'm I'm posting and posting and posting and nobody is here. I'm speaking into the fucking void and and the void won't speak back. I need you guys to help me. I went back on my birth family for you. Fight for your rights to and to say what you believe to to fight for a fucking ethno state and where are you? They're kicking me out of my accommodation in a week. I've said I've I've said that I'm not going. I prepaid this semester's rent, so bring me some cash before they get me out. Uh, I think I can claim squatters' rights. I've I've printed out this this little this declaration that you stick on your door because I won't go quietly. If they think that they can silence me, they are wrong. I'm doing this for you guys too. This isn't just my fight, it's everyone's. I need your help. Raid the uni website, dox them, show them that we won't stand for it. Help me, help you, please. I just want it to be heard. And yet, it seems like nobody was ever listening. Nobody ever will. Unless I make them. Unless I find a way to make my voice rise above the cacophony of shit. The constant dizzying, tiring tirade of it all, the lies. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I can't pretend to live life as if as if nothing is happening. As if we aren't about to go off the edge because we are. We're headed off the face of a cliff, and nobody is doing anything. I have fallen through the cracks. 
and nobody's noticed. I don't think people even know who I am anymore. Which is perfect. Because I can fix that. You will know my name. You are going to listen. Thank <laughs> you.